Hello class! Good day and welcome back to our class here in Ag Eng 40, your fundamentals of agricultural engineering. So you have already discussed the uh, sa atong first field of specialization, which is your farm machinery and equipment. And that was discussed. All of the three topics were discussed by Dr. Sinan. And uh, we also you also we ah we also have discussed um, the first part of uh, our second field of specialization, which is your land and water resources engineering. Mabangga na girl sa likod, kay na arang dan diha o. Which is your land and water resource engineering. And uh, dito, naka-discuss na mo sa agrometeorology. And I hope ma'am um, Grace has discussed you well sa atong a topic. And now, on our second part sa atong um, land and water resource engineering, we will now be discussing irrigation and drainage and basically our goal for this lesson is that first we have to review the basic soil plant and water relations okay number two is to discuss the importance of irrigation and drainage and number three is to discuss irrigation and drainage systems let's go first dito sa atong first nga learning outcomes Soil itself daw is not essential to a growing plant. Okay? Nga man because it serves as a storage reservoir lang for nutrients and water which is needed for plant growth. Again, soil is not the primary um, kinahanglan sa plant. Ang gikinahanglan sa plant is ang kanang nutrients o kanang water nga naa na store dia sa soil. Okay? Crop production potential is greatly influenced by the properties of the soils. And these properties are influenced which will depend on the activities such as tillage, erosion, drainage, and irrigation. So that's, those are farm activities that are done sa atong mga soil and ato nagipang buhat para, man, man, para ma manipulate na to ang soil and then para Dako po ang iyang um, capacity to hold nutrients. And we have here seven important agricultural soil properties. And kung naasiguro mo yung soil science sa una, then this will be a review for you. Because some of these one are already have been discussed sa soil science. Okay, so we have seven impor important properties ana sa atong soil. Okay? So let us discuss each one by one. First is your soil composition. Your soil is composed into three parts. Again, that is your solid, your water, and your air. Okay, so basically, 50% of the composition of your soil is composed of your water and your air. And the other 50% is composed of your solids. Okay, so basically, sa atong solids, it can also be divided into two parts. Your mineral and your organic matter. And majority of the part of your solids is your minerals. And only 1 to 5% of the whole um, soil is composed sa imong organic matter. Nga na lang siya kagamay. So, Ang kaning atong water o kaning atong air, mo depende na, depende sa unsay, unsa kadaghan ang tubig or unsa kadaghan ang air. So kung daghan ang tubig, then of course, mas dako og percentage ang water. And kung dako og volume ang air diha sa imong soil, then mas dako og area ay mas dako og percentage ang imong air. So basically, the air and water portion of your soil is what you call the pore volume. Okay? So, kana nga volume, pores na siya. Diha mo so nga itong water or air. So, mo, mo depende lang na unsa kadaghan ng tubig ana or unsa kadaghan ng air ana. Okay? Kana lang. Um, under normal far farming practices daw, the ratio of solid to pores remains constant for a given environmental condition. The organic matter also remains stable. And organic matters can be altered by changing conditions 
such as erosion and cultural practices wa mo kasabot sa kumang yung pang yaw-yaw oy as a review para ninyo what are organic matter on sa ganin ng organic matter basically organic matter consists of decaying plants and animal material right and base uh, and these are um, largely microbes and um, insects sa ato nakitaan kaganiha sa atong um, composition sa atong soil as you can see your organic matter is just 5% of the total volume of the soil but it serves as the primary storage for your plant nutrients okay so ang kanang atong mga organic matter diha jud na nagika ng atong mga nutrients and those nutrients are very important sa atong tanom okay so the balance of your soil your water and your air is very important sa imong plant the ratio of water to air in the pores of the volume also will vary because why kung mudako ang atong um, portion sa water nga nadiha sa atong soil ang air ang mugamay kung mudako na po ang air mugamay po ang water if soil is completely filled with water pasabutan na na napuno og tubig ang kanang atong soil that means it is saturated and kung siguro kung saturated ang atong soil walay air ang atong water and that is not healthy for our plant because our plant also needs ground air it the, the roots also needs air <laughs> the roots also need air kaya ang atong roots kailan po siya mo breathe that's why we should have air spaces dira sa atong soil without air oxygen in particular root respiration is disrupted and uh, again that is uh, integral part for the growth of our plants that is our soil composition another soil property is your soil texture so basically soil texture is the way to describe the feel of the soil so imo lang i-feel ang soil then that is the soil texture it can either be gritty it can either be a coarse sand or it can either also be a silt a silt loam which has the feel of a flower iba mo nang feel sa flower kanang pino nak jud ka isa nga mga particles okay we have three classes of soil particles you have your sand, you have your silt, and you have your clay. Okay? So, ing ani ang comparison sa sizes sa atong sand, silt, o clay. Basically, the biggest one is your sand, wherein its size, the diameter of the sand ranges from 0.05 millimeters to 1 millimeter. Yan nakadako ng sand. Ang atong silt, Ang iyang diameter ranges from 0 0.002 to 0 0.05 millimeters. And ang atong pinahagamay diri is mo ang atong clay. Your clay is less than 0 0.002 millimeters. Okay? So ang anak kagamay ang atong clay. The relative proportions of uh, these three soil particles can be determined by soil textural class. That is a laboratory analysis which determines the fraction of your sand, silt, and clay. Are you, um, are you familiar with the soil texture triangle? So, naadid to, makita na nimo pila ka percent ang sand, pila ka percent ang silt, pila ka percent ang clay. And you can also try the fill method. So, imo na tanahon kung unsa ka on ang kaya mahimo nga ribbon sa atong um, soil. Let's try that one now. Okay guys, so this is how you are going to conduct your fill method. So first is you are going to get a sample of soil. So in this case, I took a soil sample here and ako siya gibutang ang moisture gamay para mahimo siya ngayon. Okay? And now, para ni mo mahibawaan kung pila ka percent siguro ang content ng sandery, ang silt of clay. Ang imo lang buhaton is maghimo ka gribon. Magtry ka og himo gribon. So pagtry himo gribon. Ngayon lang nato. Nya, 
kung taas siya o ganang length ang ribbon, makaingon ta nga, clay na siya. And then, kung mubo lang nga length sa ribbon ng atong mahimo, in this case, makahimo siya ribbon, pero dili kay siya taas. So, we can say that this is not a clay. And then, this is not a sandpot because makahimo siya o ginagmay nga ribbon. So, siguro, na siya sa sandilom. <laughs> Watang ibaw eh. Kay, ang feel ani is somewhat like gritty. Oh. Basta gritty. Basta na sand. <laughs> Basta yung ana lang pagkuan. Yung ana lang pagkondak na ng feel method. Another soil property is your soil structure. Basically, your soil structure is the arrangement of sand, your, your silt, and your clay particles in a soil profile. Okay? So we have here your four basic soil structures. You have your granular, your platy, your angular, and your columnar or prismatic. So basically, when you say granular, all your individual particles uh, are grouped together in small and nearly spherical grains. And makakita ka nga nindot siya nga pagka purmaan ng kaning granular. It is best for seepage of water. Ang, ang atong water perfect ra siya nga makasulod dira sa atong granular nga soil. Okay? And usually, naan ni siya malocate sa ibabaw part gamay sa atong soil. We also have here your platy. Platy is made up of soil particles that are aggregated in thin plates or sheets piled horizontally on one another. Diri sa itong plate, mas lisod ang atong tubig nga mo lusot pa ubos. Nga naman, kay mura siyag mga plates ba nga nakapatong-patong, e then ng atong tubig mag muagi siya pa kilid. Okay? So, makita ni mo dira ang atong kanamura siyag plates nga na diha sa itong pala diha. Okay? We also have this blocky. Ang kanin blocky nga structure, Duha man ni sila actually ka buok block um, subangular blocky ug angular blocky and they are soil particles that cling together in nearly square or angular blocks having more or less sharp edges and lisod pod mo penetrate ang atong tubig dere sa atong blocky nga soil structure okay and usually they are found deeper dere sa atong soil and we also have your la last year prismatic ang kaning atong prismatic or columnar nga soil structure, they are formed into vertical columns. That is why it is called columnar. And, makakita kag mga vertical cracks. And, di, di ra lang na to, makita lang atong water nga mo, infiltrate pa ubos. Okay, so, lisod pod, ang atong tubig, muagi aning atong prismatic or columnar structure. And look, and basically, they are also located dito po sa ubos-ubos gamay nga part sa atong soil. So these are again your four basic soil structures. Productive agricultural soils have soil structures that allows good root penetration. Take note, ang kanang maayo nga soil structure, it exhibits good root penetration dali maka kubkub ang atong roots ana nga soil and there is a good exchange of air and water within the soil profile. So take note with that one, the soil would should basically be soft. Siguro low me siguro na soil or kanang basta dali lang maka kub kub ang atong roots or and and it should have a good water and air exchange. So pwede dali makasod ang hangin dito sa ilam o dali makasod ang tubig. So, na a good infiltration ng atong soil. Another soil property is your soil density. So, as you can remember, what is density again? Sa so, ganun density, that is your mass over volume. So, when you are talking about soil density, you are talking about the mass over, of the soil over the volume of the soil. And we have two kinds of soil density. We have your bulk density, and we also have your particle density. 
Ang difference sa aning bulk density and particle density is from their formula. Because why? Your bulk density is the ratio of the mass of the soil over the volume of the whole soil, including uh, sa may na-include ng whole soil, including the air spaces, the water spaces, and the soil mismo. Okay, mauna sa itong bulk density. Sa itong particle density, when we are talking about particle density, it refers to the ratio of the dry mass of your soil. Ang katong bulk density, dry mass of the soil, gapon to. And then, ang kanyang particle density, the dry mass of the soil divided by the volume of the soil particles. Ato nag exclude ang pore spaces. Ato nag exclude ang water spaces. So, ang volume lang sa soil ang atong i-consider ani. So, mass of the soil divided by the volume of the soil. Typically daw, bulk density sa soil ranges from 1.1 to 1.7 grams per cubic centimeter. And for particle density daw, it ranges from 2.6 to 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So particle density daw is typically constant. It changes only if the organic matter content changes. Okay? Whereas bulk density depends on the amount of pore spaces in the soil. Okay, so again, ang particle density, gamay lang yung changes, but ang bulk density, it will depend on the pore spaces of your, of your soil. If your soil is compact, then kung compact ni mo soil, dako ang density ng soil. Nga na lang. Okay? So kung luag ang imong soil, kanang natil ang imong soil, then dako ay gamay ang bulk density ng imong soil. And when your bulk density is high, then probably the aeration and the infiltration of water is low. Ano man kay compact ang imong kuan lagi. And dili makasod ang hangin, dili pod makasod ang tubig. So another soil property is your soil porosity. Soil porosity is basically the spaces between the solid soil, the soil solids and the particles, okay? So soil porosity describes the portion of the soil volume that can hold water or air. Again, it is the portion it is the portion of the whole volume of the soil which can hold either water or air. And basically, porosity is defined as the volume of pores divided by the volume of the soil. So again, the volume of the pores divided by the volume of the soil. And it is expressed in percent. Okay, so let's try to solve problems that will relate sa imong bulk density, particle density, and porosity. See, we have this problem. You have a box now that is full of undistributed soil. So this box now is placed on a field and it was settled for a long period of time, siguro. And then, later on, this box was taken in a field. Okay? And this box has a dimension of 2.5 centimeters deep by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Okay, and it is full with fresh soil that is weighed 450 grams before siya i-dry. Kaya ang katong box man daw, i-dry man daw ito siya after sa pagkuha. Pero initially, before gi-dry siya, it weighed 450 grams. Now, after drying daw, they found out that the soil weighs 375 grams ready ay. And now, since natang-tang naman ang water at to, and probably siguro ang air, kay murag, nig, kuha na, nigwas na. So, then, the volume daw of the soil particles is found out to be 130 cubic centimeters. And we have to determine the bulk density 
the particle density and the porosity of our soil. So how are we going to do that? Let's try to solve this one using the concepts that we have just learned. Dili ta mag remember sa formula kay ko mag salig nato sa formula then if we encounter some other problems that still is related to this one dili mo makasolve kay nagsalig ra man mo sa sa formula. Okay. So unsa ra ganito atong bulk density? Unsa definition sa atong bulk density? It is the ratio of the mass of the soil divided by the volume of the soil. Unsa man unsa yung mass sa soil? The mass of the dry soil. Okay? Divided by the mass uh, the volume of the whole soil. Kanang bulk density whole soil meaning apil ang pore spaces, apil ang water, apil ang so solids. Okay, so how are we going to solve that? Letter letter A. Solve for bulk density. So, ang symbol eh, sa density is rho. Unya, ato yung butang bulk. Rho B. Mala na ito symbol kung tahay kayo. Nagpataka naman tayo rin, diba? Okay. Rho B is just equal to the mass of the dry soil divided by the volume of the soil. Okay. So, it is given the rate. Let's say, mass sa uh, dry soil. So, naging yung after drying. So, mo na ng mass dry nga soil. So, that is 375 gr grams divided by the volume of the soil. So, how can you get the volume if you are given the dimensions of a box? Basically, that is length times width times height. So, 2.5 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. Okay, so let's do the calculation. That is 375 grams divided by 2.5 times 10 times 10. That is equal to 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. So this is your bulk density. And this is the answer of your bulk density. So, the bulk density of your soil sample is 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. So now, let's try to solve for the particle density. Letter B. Ito na po, gamit na ni is rho P, particle man. Okay. So, rho P, Ano sa ganyan definition sa itong particle density? Our particle density is the ratio of the dry mass of the soil divided by saman, the volume of the particles. Diba? Natin gisulti sa itong problem kagani ha. After drying daw, hindi gamay ang iyang weight. And then, ang volume po, naging ngundari, the volume of the soil particles is 130 centimeter cube. Assuming hagi, assume lang ting, li, lang ni nga after drying daw, ang pore spaces mga wala. Dili good na siya mawala jud. Pero ang gamay ang mga pore spaces. So, niya, assumption lang nga ang volume daw sa soil particles lang mismo is 130 centimeter cube. So Let's have the formula. <clears throat> Yo, mass of dry soil divided by the volume of the soil part. Okay, so what? Samanto. So mass of dry soil, same, three hundred seventy-five grams divided by. Unsa naman? So, di ba ang atong first guy? Ang volume man ni sa atong box. Pero karon na naman na nag-given na, 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 volume sa atong soil particles. So that is 130 centimeter cube. And now, 
let's try to solve this one. So that is 375 divided by 130. So your answer here is particle density is 2.885 grams per cubic centimeter. And please always do take note that your particle density is always higher than your bulk density. Nga no man, because obviously, your particle density, wala niya giapil ang pore spaces. Ang pore spaces mo na makapagaan sa atong soil. Kung wala yung pore spaces, compact ang atong soil, therefore, mas dako siya density. Okay? So therefore, as you can see right here, your particle density is 2.885 grams per cubic centimeter. And now, let's solve for the porosity of our soil, of the soil sample. So, letter C. Kung sa lagay itong formula sa itong porosity, it is the ratio of the volume of air, of the pore spaces, I mean, divided by the whole volume of your soil. Katapat to siyang before siya gidry ha, kay kung katong atong 130 cubic centimeters sa itong gamiton, <laughs> weird na siya. Okay, so this is how we are going to solve this one. Because we are looking for the percentage of pore spaces in this soil, then, and we are given this one, 130 cubic cubic centimeters. This one is the volume of the soil particles. In or and in order for us to get the porosity, ang atong kailangan is the ratio of the volume of the pore spaces divided by the volume of the soil. Do we have the volume of the soil? Yes, we do. We have this one. This is the volume of our soil. Before siya gidry, dili ang kadong after siya gidry. Do we have the volume of the pore, pore spaces? Wala tay volume sa pore spaces dire, but we can solve for the volume the, of the pore spaces. How can we solve for the volume of the pore spaces? So, ang atong buhaton, ato, ato lang tanaw ng atong problem. So, ato lang nitawagun nga VPS, volume of the pore spaces. So, to get the I for the volume of the pore spaces, ato lang siya ay minus sa whole volume, whole volume minus the volume of the soil particles. Ang atong 130 centimeter cube. Sige, so that is the volume of the soil minus the volume of the soil particles. Timan e, ang kaning akong pasabot sa aning atong volume sa soil, it includes, oh no, it includes your air, your water, and your particles. And kani, ang particles lang dyan ni. So, makan silang particles ang mabilin ang air o water. So, that is the pore spaces, right? So, therefore, let's try to solve this one. So, that is volume of the soil, which is 2.5 times 10 times 10. So, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 2.5, that is 250. So, 250 cubic centimeters minus 100 30 cubic centimeters. And you will get an answer, I think, of 120 cubic centimeters. Are we done? We're not yet done because this is only the volume of your pore spaces. But our porosity, as you can remember, is a percentage of the pore spaces of your soil. So therefore, ang atong buhaton ani, Porosity is equal to 120 cubic centimeters divided by 250 cubic 
centimeters. Cancel, cancel, and multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. Then, therefore, your porosity is 120 divided by 250. No. So, that is 48%. And this is your final answer for your porosity. So now we already have solved for your bulk density, for your particle density, and for the porosity of the soil. And I hope nga wala lang to ninyo gigamit ang formula but you understand the concept on how to solve this kind of problem. Kay mo dipindi ang pag-solve ninyo sa unsa nga kind of problem siya gi state. Most agricultural soils have a porosity of about 50%. Okay? But if they become compacted, then of course the porosity of the soil decreases, which limits the space available for water and air, which restricts root development. Okay, so that is your soil porosity. Let's have another soil property. Ang akaoy kapoy mo baktas daigi kan. Mulabeno. Our sixth soil property is your soil infiltration and permeability. So what is your soil infiltration? Ato na na. Infiltration is basically the movement of water into the soil from the soil surface. Take note of the word, word from the so soil surface because mo na definition sa to infiltration. Ang tubig na una sa soil surface and then that is the rate of the movement of water from the soil surface to into the soil okay so that is your infiltration the rate again of your infiltration is called the infiltration rate it or the intake rate which is it is the measurement of the ability of the soil to absorb either rainfall or an applied irrigation water and your infiltration rate will depend on what kind of soil you have and it will depend on many conditions such as residue cover surface roughness water content and slope and others okay and we also have another one your permeability what is soil permeability and what is the difference of your soil infiltration and soil permeability basically your soil permeability is the water movement within the soil so atong atong infiltration the water movement from the surface of the soil into the soil ang atong, ang atong permeability is the movement of your water within the soil Bautai. So soils with larger and connected pore spaces are more permeable than soils that are small and disconnected ang iyang mga pore spaces. So ang kana ato mga pore, pore spaces gani kung connected ato mga pore spaces then dali makasulod ang atong tubig ang mga pore spaces. So kung disconnected na sila then mas lisod ang atong tubig mag flow dira sa atong mga pore spaces. Ingana lang meaning ana and the downward movement of the water into the soil is what you call the percolation. Okay? And that is because of your um, influence of gravity. Ang general term sa movement sa tong water within the soil is your permeability. And ang kanang downward movement sa tong soil with the, the influence of gravity is your percolation. Okay? And the measure of the rate of water movement is called the hydraulic conductivity so ang rate sa movement sa atong water ang velocity sa atong water within the soil is what you call the hydraulic conductivity and it is basically measured in inches per hour hinay no hinay siya kay grabe maka compact ng atong soil sa ilawom we also have this last soil property and this is what you call your soil water content. Okay, so on say solid nga tubig dira sa atong soil. We have four types of um, water content sa atong soil. We have saturation, 
we have field capacity, we have a wilting point, and we also have hygroscopic water. What is the difference of those four? Una to sa saturated. Basically, saturated is when your soil is full of water. Ang atong pore spaces sa atong soil is puno o tubig. Mala na meaning ana. Walay air nga nasa atong na at na nang atong mga pore spaces because again napuno siya og tubig. Okay? Ang atong field capacity, di ba sa atong soil kung ato gingon first saturated na siya but because of the influence of gravity, ang kanang atong tubig nagsigi siya og percolate dito sa ilaw, sigi siya og adto dito sa ubos until such a time nga ang kanang atong soil enough lang siya nagunit og kanang tubig and that water is available for plants and kana ang 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 kana ang kana nga water is what we call your field capacity okay so that is your water nga nasa imong soil nga enough lang siya makahold ana nga soil and kadtong excess nga water to ana na flush out na dito sa ubos-ubos pa nga part okay the next one is your permanent wilting point or your wilting point ang kana wilting wilting point di ba dito sa tong field capacity your plants the roots of your plants can absorb the water at dong atong field capacity okay and then there will come a time nga ang dili na ma suyup sa atong roots ang available nga water nga naa sa atong soil kay basin uga-uga na ang atong soil and the, and then di ba na na jud ay moisture ang atong soil kanunay di jud na mahurot ang moisture but there will come a time that your plant cannot absorb that water nga naa sa imong soil. And that time, mo na itong gitawag na per permanent wilting point. Mag-wilt mag ang imong plant because dili na, mo, dili na siya mo-absorb o moisture dito sa itong soil. And lastly, your hygroscopic. Ang kani, this is adsorption forces na lang jud ang nagunit sa itong soil o itong water. Again, take note, impossible ang soil nga wala joy tubig take note of that bisag kana nang nasa desert nagtuo kag uga na kaayo but naagya po nay moisture ang kanang atong soil dira sa desert pero hygroscopic na na sila which is kana nga water di na jud na nimo ma-extract pit sa unsao nimo diha sa yang diha sa soil and of, of course ang plants di pud mahakuha og moisture ana so that is what, why it is called hygroscopic because hygroscopic forces na ang naghold anang atong soil ug ang atong water okay so those are the four water levels of your soil so i hope you did understand all of those okay so basically the amount of water between your field capacity and your wilting point is what you call the available water for your plants. Okay? Timan eh, sa field capacity to the wilting point, ng levels of water, diha lang kutob, ay di mo na atong gitawag nga available water for the plants. Plant available water. Okay? So, those are the seven soil properties. And I hope that that is a review sa, sa soil science and I hope na may soil science on the first place but if you don't have then I hope na learn mo sa atong lesson karon. And we'll have a part 2 sa atong lesson and uh, we will have that one later. So see you guys on our next lesson.